welcome back to It's a Vase Productions. Today, taking another look at another George Carlin video. Today we're reacting to George Carlin about rape. Now, when someone mentioned this, I saw it in the comments the other day. I was like, I gotta see George's take on this. Also, with uh, over the past 10, 15 years, definitely heard things like, this is a subject you can't joke about, which a lot of comedians, not all, but some will take it as a challenge. If you, there's something that, they, you, that you, you're not allowed to joke about, they'll find a way to joke about it. Um, so, and George Carlin's one of the best. So, enough of me. Let's get to him. Oh, some people don't like you to talk like that. Oh, some people would like to shut you up for saying those things. You know that. Lots of people, lots of groups in this country want to tell you how to talk, tell you what you can't talk about. <laughs> well, sometimes they'll say, well, you can talk about something, but you can't joke about it. Call so it. you can't joke about something because it's not funny. Comedians run into that shit all the time. Like rape. They'll say, you can't joke about rape. Rape's not funny. I say, fuck you. I think it's hilarious. How do you like that? <laughs> I can prove to you that rape is funny. Picture Porky Pig raping Elmer Fudd. <laughs> See, hey, why do you think they call him Porky, huh? I know what you're gonna say, Elmer was asking for it. <laughs> Elmer was coming on to Porky. Porky couldn't help himself, he got a hot on, he got horny, he lost control, he went out of his mind. A lot of men talk like that. A lot of men think that way. They think, they think it's the woman's fault. They like to blame the rape on the woman. Say, hey, she had it coming, she was wearing a short skirt. These guys think women ought to go to prison for being cock teasers. Don't seem fair to me. Don't seem right. But you can joke about it. I believe you can joke about anything. It all depends on how you construct the joke. What the exaggeration is. What the exaggeration is. Because every joke needs one exaggeration. Every joke needs one thing to be way out of proportion. Give you an example. You ever see a news story like this in the paper? Every now and then you run into a story. So some guy broke into a house, stole a lot of things, and while he was in there, he raped an 81-year-old woman. And I'm thinking to myself, why? <laughs> what the fuck kind of a social life does this guy have? <laughs> I want to say, why did you do that? Well, she was coming on to me. <laughs> We were dancing and I got horny. Hey, she was asking for it. She had on a tight bathrobe. I say, Jesus Christ, be a little fucking selective next time, will you? Now, speaking of rape, you know what I wonder? I wonder, is there more rape at the equator or the North Pole? <laughs> These are the kind of things I think about when I'm sitting home alone and the power goes out. I wonder, is there more rape at the equator or the North Pole? I mean, per capita. I know the populations are different. Most people think it's the equator. I think it's the North Pole. People think it's the equator because it's hot down there. They don't wear a lot of clothing. Guys can see women's tits. They get horny, and there's a lot of fucking going on. That's exactly why there's less rape at the equator, because there's a lot of fucking going on. You can tell there's a lot of fucking at the equator. Take a look at the population figures. Billions of people live near the equator. How many Eskimos we got? 30? 35? <laughs> No one's getting laid at the North Pole. It's too fucking cold. Guys say to their wives, hey, tonight, honey, huh? Tonight, huh? Are you crazy? The windshield factor is 300 below. <laughs> These guys are deprived. They're horny. They're pent up. Every now and then, they bust out. They got to rape somebody. Jesus. Now, the biggest problem an Eskimo rapist has, trying to get wet leather leggings off a woman who's kicking. <laughs> Do you ever try to get leather pants off of someone who doesn't want to take them off? You would lose your heart on in the process. Up at the North Pole, your dick would shrivel up like a stack of dimes. That's another thing I wonder. I wonder, does a rapist have a heart on when he leaves the house in the morning? Or does he develop it during the day while he's walking around looking for somebody? These are the kind of thoughts that kept me out of the really good schools. <laughs> now I probably got the feminists all pissed off at me because I'm joking about rape. 
Feminists want to control your language. Feminists want to tell you how to talk. And they're not alone. They're not alone. I'm not picking on the feminists. They got a lot of company in this country. There's a lot of groups, a lot of institutions in this country want to control your language. Tell you what you can say and what you can't say. Government wants to tell you some things you can't say because they're against the law. Or you can't say this because it's against the regulation. Or here's something you can't say because it's a secret. You can't tell him that because he's not cleared to know that. Government wants to control information and control language because that's the way you control thought. And basically that's the game they're in. Same with religion. Religion is nothing but mind control. Religion is just trying to control your mind, control your thoughts. So they're going to tell you some things you shouldn't say because they're sins. And besides telling you things you shouldn't say, religion's going to su suggest to you some things you ought to be saying. Here's something you ought to say first thing when you wake up in the morning. Here's something you ought to say just before you go to sleep at night. Here's something we always say on the third Wednesday in April after the first full moon in spring at four o'clock when the bells ring. <laughs> Religion is always suggesting things you ought to be saying. Same with political groups of all kinds. Political activists, anti-bias groups, special interest groups are going to suggest the correct political vocabulary, the way you ought to be saying things, and that's where the feminists come in. Now, as I said, I got nothing against the feminists. In fact, I happen to agree with most of the feminist philosophy I have read. I agree, for instance, that for the most part, men are vain, ignorant, greedy, brutal assholes who've just about ruined this planet. Who've just, who've just about ruined this planet because they're afraid someone might have a bigger dick out there somewhere. <laughs> Men are basically insecure about the size of their dicks, and so they go to war over it. You don't have to be a political scientist or a history major to see the bigger dick foreign policy theory at work. It goes something like this. What? They have bigger dicks? Bomb them! And of course, the bombs and the bullets and the rockets are all shaped like dicks. I don't understand that part of it, but it is part of the equation. So I agree with that abstract, that, that man, men, males have pushed a technology that just about has this planet in a stranglehold. Mother Earth, <laughs> raped again. Guess who? Hey, she was asking for it. <laughs> I also happen to like it when feminists attack these fat-ass housewives who think there's nothing more to life than sitting home on the telephone, drinking coffee, watching TV, and pumping out a baby every nine months. Will seven be enough, Bob? But what's the alternative? What's the alternative to pumping out a unit every nine months? Pointless careerism, pointless careerism, putting on a man-tailored suit with shoulder pads and imitating all the worst behavior of men. This is the noblest thing that women can think of, to take a job in a criminal corporation that's poisoning the environment and robbing customers out of their money. This is the worthiest thing they can think of. Isn't there something nobler they could do to be helping this planet heal? You don't hear much about that from these middle-class women. I've noticed that most of these feminists are white middle-class women. They don't give a shit about black women's problems. They don't care about Latino women. All they're interested in is their own reproductive freedom and their pocketbooks. But when it comes to changing the language, I think they make some good points. Because we do think in language. And so the quality of our thoughts and ideas can only be as good as the quality of our language. So maybe some of this patriarchal shit ought to go away. I think spokesman ought to be spokesperson. I think chairman ought to be chairperson. I think mankind ought to be humankind. But they take it too far. They take themselves too seriously. They exaggerate. They want me to call that thing in the street a person hole cover. I think that's taking it a little bit too far. <laughs> what would you call a ladies man? A person's person? That would make a he man an it person. <laughs> Little kids would be afraid of the boogie person. They'd look up in the sky and see the person in the moon. Guys would say, come back here and fight like a person and we'd all sing for it's a jolly good person. That's the kind of thing you would hear on Late Night with David Letter person. You know what I mean? <laughs> so... So I think it's an exaggeration, and I like to piss off any group that takes itself a little bit too seriously. And it does not take a lot of imagination to piss off a feminist. All you gotta do is run into Now Headquarters or Ms. Magazine and say, Hey, which one of you cute little cupcakes wants to come home and cook me a nice meal and give me a blowjob? Blowjob!
Oh, that pisses him off. You want to piss off a feminist? Call her a cum catcher. That'll get her attention. Ah, oh, don't act disgusted. Don't act disgusted. Half of you are going to go home and go down on each other tonight, remember? If you're willing to swallow cum, let's not make believe something I said was disgusting, okay? Huh? <sighs> George Garland is brilliant. Um, uh, I really like where that train of thought ended up because he started with Raven and he was like, oh, I probably pissed off feminist now. Let's talk about that. <laughs> uh, but I really liked what he said about um, the fact that we think in language. So the quality of our thought can only be as good as the quality of our language. And he's a big thinker, so... Um, I think he's absolutely right, yeah. But, yeah, that was a really, uh, really great suggestion. Love watching George Carlin. Um, just keep the suggestions coming. Don't worry if it's another comedian. I like listening to other comedians, too.